Hello everybody, I am FTA. I'm Mia. I'm Ted. And we're here to do a li little uh, LP of, um, you know, what, what the, the very first game in a franchise that myself and I think Ted are big, big fans of. Kirby and me. Kirby's Dream Land. Oh, and Mia! <laughs> Kirby's Dream Land! Hooray! Hooray! It's such a cute little game. I love this game, man. Um, so, you know, as we said, first uh, first game in Kirby's um, career. It's weird the amount of times this game has kind of been remade. For anyone who's, who's ever played Kirby's Adventure, the very last um, level before you fight DDD is essentially a remake of this game. And then, of course, in Kirby Superstar, um, uh, I, uh, I feel like me, I can't remember what the bloody... Spring Breeze. Uh, Spring Breeze. Spring Breeze, Spring Breeze is, is a uh, remake of this game. So they've... Uh, how, laboratory, how laboratories have gotten a lot of mileage from this game. Not to mention that when they remade Superstar, they remade the remake of uh, Spring Breeze, and then they made a different version of Spring Breeze. So it's I think we're up to like five times or, <laughs> or something. And Kirby so. Nightmare in Dreamland, no? Uh. Okay, well, sure. We yeah, can sure. What you think? <laughs> it's weird. It's just like 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 Nintendo have remade this um this game more almost as many times as Sega have ported Sonic One. It's like getting insane at this point in time. Uh, but it it is it is probably one of the one of the uh, it's a it's a really solid game considering the platform and how like honestly like how short it is like I'm pretty sure you could probably beat this even quicker than you could beat uh, Super Mario Land which is already like a pretty pathetically short game as well so uh, <laughs> yeah <laughs> you can you can play this you can beat this game easily in under half an hour I'd say even on your first time. Yeah, uh, I, I feel that this was a uh, this was '92, so the Game Boy had been out for a few years. And I think at that point, people still viewed uh, the Game Boys kind of like just like short pick up and play things, like something just to play when you're on like the toilet or something. So like I, I'm not sure. What did you guys say? You know, the, in my mind, uh, um, probably Pokemon was probably one of the the longest games that would have been released for the Game Boy. Probably uh, it's Metroid Two: Return of Samus. That had save features though. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, there were a handful of games that were longer. I think, like, they had uh, Zelda Adventure. No, oh, yeah. Link's Adventure. Link's Adventure, um, yeah. Yeah, on, on, but Pokemon definitely was probably the first game on, uh, on a handheld that you could play for, I'd say, 40 hours, uh, for sure. Especially if you were trying to 100% the, the, the Pokédex or something. So. There was yeah. also Final, the Final Fantasy games on Game Boy. Oh, yeah, they're, yeah. I'm getting, um, I'm getting, I'm getting bad flashbacks, guys. Just wish me words. <laughs> Don't date the video. I love this, this little fucker though. He's like, he's a tree. I love the fact that let's let's be fair. In context of Dreamland, what what is he doing that that warrants him getting the shit kicked out of him on a daily basis by Kirby? Um, have any of you seen the Kirby anime episode where they um where they go to Wispy Woods? He he was kind of a dick, if I remember correctly. Yeah, he was. Yeah, but, but I mean, in context of the games, he just stands there, like he doesn't move, he can't really, apart from shaking some apples, what, what threat does he pose? Uh, um, okay, Gareth, have you ever played Kirby's Dream Land? I, I have played it, I have not finished it, but I, I do, I do only because I have, I'm playing this on the, um, Dreams Collection, the 20th anniversary, uh, compilation game for the Wii. Oh yeah, that it's a this is a great uh, a great uh, compilation uh, for the record. But did yep. you get to the Wispy Woods boss fight in Dreamland Three? I don't think so. Okay, so in Dreamland Three, each boss fight has like two two forms to it. In the first form, Wispy Woods is basically same business as usual. If you get you get to the point where you, I think it's like at half health, Wispy Woods gets this absolutely frighteningly demonic face, and it's probably one of the most terrifying things I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> <laughs> no joke. So. <laughs> Yeah, um, I don't know what his deal is, but he's just, I don't know, maybe he's just sick of Kirby's shit. He's, Kirby's the biggest jackass in the Kirby franchise, in my opinion, so, you know. Yeah. That, that's why I love the plot to, um, is it Mass Attack? Or the one where, like, the, that thing takes his cake? Uh, that's Squeak Squad. Squeak apparently. Squad, and he just goes and beats the shit out of everyone because he thinks they took his slice of cake. <laughs> I love Kirby games dip. so much, I know, right? This is the only game where DDD is the actual bad guy, am I correct? Or at least the only uh... one. It's one of them. Yeah, because most times, Kirby, like in um, in Adventure, he's not really the bad guy. Uh, yeah. Again, in, in that game, DDD is really the hero and Kirby yeah, fucks everything up. Yeah, he's trying to save the world. <laughs> He's, yeah. trying to, he's trying to protect Dreamland, and Kirby's like, nope, none of that shit. 
in, in almost every other situation, as far as I can remember, either uh, Kirby's beating up DDD for no real reason, or DDD's like possessed by something, like dark matter usually, or or whatever. So yeah, yeah. So it's uh, DDD is is our our one true uh, monarch <laughs> <and> ruler. <laughs> But you know, it, it's weird because um, my first Kirby game was Adventure, and I Same. think this was pro probably my second. And I actually tra I remember this. There was a squad. I traded Donkey Kong Land on the Game Boy for this, and I think that was a good investment because this is yes. a much better game than Donkey Kong Land was. The first Donkey Kong Land was shit. Yeah, it was not a very good game. But it's weird how like it's, you know, like how like uh, after you play you play Sonic like the um, later Sonic games and you go back to one. It's like where's the yeah. spin dash? It's odd in this in this game. It's like where's the power ups? Yeah. One, yeah. hmm. one weird thing I had was when I, I played Kirby's Adventure and this one kind of first, and then I played Superstar and you have to press a separate button to fly, like instead of the up button. Oh, that was that was what what on, like that's the thing that that uh, turns me off about uh, this either is that you can't press the A button to fly. In this, you have to press up. I I believe. Um, no, I didn't play Kirby's Dream Land, the, the Game Boy version, until way later. My first Kirby game was Kirby 64. Um, Good and game. I didn't I didn't play Kirby's Dream Land probably until I was maybe like 18 or or so, because I, I played it on an emulator. And uh, I think, no, I, I played it on an emulator to test a Game Boy recording footage, because I knew it was like a 10-minute game. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Uh, but yeah, so I don't have too much nostalgic con uh, connection to this. I, I I love Kirby. I played probably Kirby's Nightmare and Dreamland um, hours and hours when I was uh, when I was young. So I I, lo I love this this little guy. Uh, I was gonna say pink, but I just remember that he's he's white <laughs> in in this game because they <laughs> they didn't the decide color. the color. It, well, actually, I can't remember if they hadn't decided what color they wanted him to be. There was I some sort of white argument. On the, yeah, yeah. There, there was a slight argument, I believe, with um, Sakurai and Miyamoto. I, th I think Sakurai wanted him to be yellow, but Miyamoto was, but Miyamoto was like making pink, or was, or was it the other way around? I think it's the other uh, way around. Because I know, I know, one of them was like making yellow, and the other one was making pink. And then, because I, I would assume that at that point, Miyamoto would have had more pull at Nintendo, where if he said making pink. Well, this is also this is also Sakurai's game, though. You have to remember. So like... yeah, Sakurai wanted him to be pink. I have the Wikipedia page up. Oh, nice. Yeah, that um, the the U.S. box art has Kirby white, but I believe that the Japanese box art, even for the original Dreamland, has him as pink. So yeah, because I remember even even for the box art, or at least in Europe, the box art for Kirby's Adventure, he's like an extremely pale pink. Where he's he's practically white, with like slight pink overtones. Yeah, because you can't because pink is for girls. Well, you know, I mean, I, I tell you, as we all know, American Kirby is hardcore, motherfucker. I love American Kirby. <laughs> he doesn't, he doesn't take shit from no one. <laughs> and you know what? This power up for ages in Smash, I was like, where the hell did this power up come from? Like uh, that, you, you... that was another thing that surprised me when I went. I thought the curry was a, like an actual Nintendo. Yeah, <laughs> it's like it's only it's only in this game though, because it's with the only. Most most of, of of Kirby's attacks come from he just sucks up enemies and throws them. There are a few power ups like you can get Mike, and yeah. you can get Bomb, but they're, they're one time things. And then the uh, the Curry power up, and I believe we're gonna see in um, level three or four the kind of um, permanent flying puff power power up. Yeah, which I'm not really sure what that's called, but it's uh, aside from um, the lack of power ups, there are a bunch of staples in this game. Like the Warp Stars. I, I was surprised going back this how things like the Warp Stars, the um, in Invincibility Lollipop, and like a lot of like um, kind of Kirby series staples are still in effect. It's kind of like how you, you go back and play the, the original Mario, like, like this power up, which um, I don't think has made uh, many, many appearances in the uh, franchise since this game. Uh, no, but shoot 'em up sections are a Kirby staple. They just always have a different. Uh... They just always have a different uh, excuse for them, and they're usually at the end of the game instead of being randomly in the middle. But I I love the one in um in Mukure Wishes. I think that that's that, that's a great section, Zoom up section. But um, it's weird how kind of like if you go back to the original Mario to um and, and Sonic, like a lot of the the same small core ideas have lasted throughout. You know, Kirby's tw at this point, twenty five year. Uh Life yeah. Man? Yeah, this is ninety one, I believe. Um, and so yeah, that's twenty five years. Uh. 
Yeah, it's a, there's a lot of things, and even just kind of small things too, like the the little the little animations at the beginning of the level, for instance. I love, I love well, those. There's things. usually something like that in every in every Kirby game, like a little thing either at the beginning or at the end of the the level, like that. Um, and it's just, uh, I just want to say it's very clear that this came out relatively later in the Game Boy's life cycle because for for a Game Boy game, this looks absolutely phenomenal. Okay, yeah. this I mean, aside from color, this looks like Kirby Adventure. Yeah, it does. Uh, yeah, pretty much. The the sprites are pretty close. Yeah. Um, I have to say though, those, those kind of like, I'd love to know whose idea those were. The little like cutscene things. They they give they give such personality to Kirby, which is something that I love characters at this point. Unless you what you know uh, read the manual, if they had a, had a cartoon lack that, because you know because most of these games didn't have any cutscenes of any um, type. So those little, those, my favorite ones are the ones where it's just Kirby making an, an idiot of himself. Like he goes fishing and sucks in the fish. <laughs> but like the wire's going his cheek, I love that. I think like the one, that's one thing like Ted, you love, um, you love Nightmare in Dreamland. I, I like that game. But you, it's, it's weird how for a, a, a console it was, was so, so much more powerful than the NES. Kirby became a lot less, um, a lot much less expressive in those uh cutscenes. He barely showed any expression in, in his face. And for me, I always thought that was a big, big letdown. Uh, I haven't played enough of the adventure version of Kirby's Adventure to really be able to compare them off the top of my head. Uh, I do... The, the, the sprite work in in Nightmare on Dreamland in general is, is pretty good. Um, I think they use Kirby's Nightmare on Dreamland sprite all the way up through Squeak Squad. If I remember correctly, they so they they reused those sprites a lot, but I'll take your word for it that his like face and cutscenes and stuff is a little bit more expressive, and I can see that basically because there's more empty space on him, allowing for like the, yeah. the expressions on him to be a little bit bigger on the on the eight bit version or whatever. So I can I can I can imagine that. I mean, I'm not trashing uh, Nightmare in Dreamland because I say the um the sprite. But the thing that always sticks in mind in Nightmare in Dreamland is um. I'm, for, I'm forgetting the enemy's name, but like the big like beetle. Uh oh, god! I know which one you're talking about. I can't remember his yeah. name. His his sprite animation of his movement is so fluid in Nightmare in Dreamland that it, when 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 I got um Superstar Deluxe for the DS, part of me was like, oh, he doesn't move as fluid as he does in Nightmare in Dreamland now. That's a <laughs> that's a shame. But uh, thank you all for joining us for part one, where I uh, I was trying to decide whether to make this one part or two. And then everyone's favorite part, Tronjohn, was just like, just end it when you die, because you suck. I was like, okay, that's what I do. <laughs> so, so, so please join us on part two, where we will uh, finish Kirby's uh, demented plot to kill everyone on Dreamland. Take care, have a good day. Bye-bye. Awesome.